Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategic Command World War 1 where we're playing as the Central Powers and in the first episode we have already declared war on Belgium, we've taken Liège, we've taken Luxembourg and uh, we've advanced a little bit into France and a little bit, uh, we're basically uh, standing right outside of Brussels and we've already uh, attacked a couple of times. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, I have mentioned that we want to deal with our fleet next and we have obviously a couple of ships we've got uh, submarines we've got pre pre dreadnoughts we've got uh, armored cruisers uh, oh no this is a battle cruiser we have got armored cruisers as well there you go we've got light cruisers we've got destroyers we've got actual dreadnoughts um, and yeah so for the for the most part in the beginning here our fleet will be more defensive because obviously the royal navy is going to be uh yeah, basically just going to destroy us but uh, one advantage we have here and uh, well, one ace up our sleeve is um, our destroyers we can place naval mines and i think we can place up to three and we're gonna obviously have to do that as well um we'll place one here and then i'd like to place another one up here and then yeah that's fine Then, do we have one more destroyer? We do, but it's over here. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to place another mine later. And I want to have our submarine up here to... Well, I don't know. I will think about having our submarine there to kind of scout. Uh, we'll do that. Now, this, uh, this convoy route here will likely be raided eventually. And you can see here... Um, that the Entente and specifically the UK will be able to blockade. Uh, there is this blockade and then there's this blockade, both of which will impact our national morale. And if this uh, goes too low, specifically below 50%, we'll actually take uh, some real damage. Um, our units will fight worse. And if it goes even lower, then, well, it's only going to get worse. But yeah, let's go back to the eastern front now as Germany. Uh, we have a detachment here in Memel. We could obviously move forward, but it's very likely that the, uh, well, that Russia is over here. In fact, let me scout this area with our submarine. Uh, we can't. Interesting. Okay. What if I, I can't move into the port? Interesting. But yeah, so we don't actually see anything here. Uh, that's fine, I suppose. Um... Hmm, we don't have a cavalry here, and we don't even have a headquarter here, which is a problem as well. So I think I'm going to just be defensive here for now, um, because the Russians, I can tell you, the Russians are very, very powerful. So we're going to go ahead and move to defend our areas here. Um, let's entrench. There we go. And then... So, we've got a couple of cores here. We have an elite core as well, which is very good. And I want to obviously make sure to protect our, um, you know, towns and cities. Uh, it's like, like Gumbin and Tilsit and Memel. These two we have protected with the detachments. And then I'm going to go ahead and protect this with a core. Um, and we already see three Russian cores, which is going to be... Oof, it's going to be rough. Now, I do want to quickly check our supply. Uh, so we have eight supply here in Gumbinen. Um, and you generally want to be in, obviously, provinces with as much supply as possible because that will make your units fight better. It will, uh, it specifically impacts your morale and readiness. But yeah, so we're entrenched here. And then um, I actually want to send one more unit over here to guard the flank if possible. So that's what we'll do. Um, entrench as well, please. And then, um, I am thinking about going here, but six supply is actually relatively low. Um, hmm. Poof. It's, yeah, it's questionable. It's questionable. We do have a recon bomber that I'm probably gonna re... Like, we can't do anything here, right? Yeah, we can't reach anyone. So we'll just go back to Königsberg, which is a national morale objective. So this will have to hold. It doesn't really... Like, it matters a, a, a lot if this gets taken or some of these provinces. It doesn't really matter so much if, like, Johannesburg is taken. But still, we obviously want to avoid that. 
Then we've got three detachments here, but none protecting us here. Um, so I'm going to send this detachment to protect Katowice. And we will entrench as well. Then we'll send this detachment to protect Breslau, which is a fortification. And then this core, I'm actually going to move... You could go to Posen, but then that would leave this open. So I'm going to move you here, but I want this core... Generally, I want to hold the south with just attachments. Now, the attachments are good at defense. If we have a look at the properties of the detachment here, you'll see they have uh, defense values of 3 and 3. Their attack is not as strong. But if we uh, compare that to a core, which is a lot more expensive, um, you'll see that they have a little bit more defense, but a lot more attack. So um, it's usually best to defend with detachments and attack with cores. And this is how you want to use your resources. Obviously, cores are better in general, but they're also obviously a lot more expensive. Okay, so we've got this under control. I'm a little bit worried about this. Um, I think I'm going to go to Johannesburg here and hold this. And then I want to... I wonder, you can go to Allenstein. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. So what we'll do is we'll actually switch this out. We'll switch you guys here. We'll switch you into the fortification where I have an elite core. And then this detachment can just hold Allenstein, which is not as important. Now, uh, this is important because a detachment uh, does not ex exert a zone of control on its own. Uh, cores do that. And so um, with a core here the Russian divisions will have a very difficult time to actually get to these um, unprotected fortifications. Uh, however, with a core, it will be significantly more difficult for them to do that. So this is kind of why the switcheroo was very, very useful. Okay, so this is all we can really do with Germany for now. And now we're going to turn our attention towards uh, Austro-Hungary. Now, Austria-Hungary, uh, we have two fronts. We obviously have the Serbian front and the Russian front. Here we'll have to attack, and we can actually start immediately by, yeah, taking Belgrade. That's going to be our goal, but uh, I got to be honest, so far I've been very unlucky. When trying to take Belgrade, I've usually uh, failed to take it in the first turn but we'll see what we can do this time so we're going to move all our units right here this is just a detachment but it is uh well defended um and so it's going to be very difficult because these units are now actually uh entrenched now they're actually not entrenched as you can see here it says ground cover down here which is basically the same thing ground cover is when you're not entrenched but it still provides some defensive bonuses so yeah we're gonna have to attack and yeah we take significant losses because there's also this river um so yeah i guess we'll just i don't know do we even just do we even want to start i mean this is so terrible honestly i don't even know if i want to i mean this looks so much better um this is just terrible i i actually think i might not want to do this because we are not, like, pre preparation bonus gives us, like, plus 30%. And uh, that would kind of negate the river penalty. So I'm actually thinking about not attacking here. Hmm. Okay, well, we also have a detachment here. Hmm. Yeah, I might actually try a different strategy than I usually would. Uh, we can go here as well. Let's actually do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, um, let's entrench. And let's actually wait for the preparation bonus. Let's be patient. Because, uh, also, here we'll have, we'll not have to attack across a river, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm actually gonna wait here for now. We'll, we'll get some damage, but I think that's... I think it's worth it. We'll see. It's 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 actually something I haven't done before. Um, okay. Now, this unit, I think... Hmm. I think I'm going to just entrench. 
for now. Um, because Austria-Hungary, yeah, isn't really the strongest. Yeah, we're going to do this for now. We're going to stay here. Um, we will get some reinforcements later on. And this detachment... I'm going to use both of these detachments probably to uh, free up these cores so they can actually uh, attack. But yeah, now this is important. Now, uh, you see there's a lot of national morale objectives that we need to hold. Otherwise, we're going to suffer. And uh, as the strategic advice told us, we will... Um, we will potentially entice Romania to attack us, which would be doubly bad. Um, so we want to hold these. Um, hmm, this is very important. Can we we can get there, but we cannot entrench as we, if we do that. Okay, um, this detachment. I'm going to send. Hmm. Huh. Okay, well, hold on. Krakow needs to hold. So I'm going to send my cavalry corps here. Um, and then all of these corps I want to send over. How far? You can go to Premishul. Let's uh, have you there then. You can go all the way here. Mm, actually, we'll do this differently. I'll probably send you here. Next to Lemberg. Then you take Tarno. Protect that. So that we are... Nice, defensible here. And then our cavalry could go to Lemberg. Protect that. You can go... Here. I think that's how we'll do it. You go here, and you cannot entrench, unfortunately. You can go to Lemberg. Then you, Galician oil fields are super important. So we'll protect them. Definitely entrench. And then I can go here. So this is the this is a good I this is a good question. I can use this core, which has uh, four and three in defense, but it won't be entrenched. Or I can use the cav cavalry here, which has three and two defense, but will be able to, to entrench. I think having the core here is actually more useful. So I'm going to send you here. Um, but as I said, again, we cannot entrench. Now with this cavalry here, we can technically take this. We could actually take a Russian town. Hmm... Uh, but then we're leaving ourselves open to uh, plenty of attacks. I think I'll actually do it, though. There is... Yeah, we've actually captured a Russian town. Now, it's not really worth that much. But still, it's kind of interesting that we were able to do that. Okay, so we're actually more on the offense in Russia than we are in Serbia. Kind of crazy. Okay, now we do have a recon bomber that I'm going to... Yeah... Send south to deal with Serbia, and then this detachment will send south as well. Uh, we can later on uh, strategically um, operate, or yeah, it says operate, um, or we can send our units across these railroads. And so this is what I'm going to be doing, so it doesn't actually matter where I put this detachment. Okay, so this is pretty much all we could do for now. Yeah, we have technically, oh, we can actually still entrench. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, we will. We will entrench. So this uh, cavalry division could potentially... Um, yeah, could actually... Well, it could be destroyed, but it could also um, take, you know, give us some valuable time to entrench in these positions. So we'll see if that plan works out. Okay. And yeah, the Ottomans, for now, uh, we see their divisions. We can even move them, but they're not yet in the war, so it doesn't... It doesn't really matter much, but I could do that. Um, I could move them up here. Um, in fact, you know what? Maybe I will. What's the supply? I, I don't even see the supply yet because they're not in the war. It's kind of weird, but uh, that's okay. Good. Um, so yeah, with that done, uh, right, we can still... Actually, there's one more thing to do. We have the um, Austro-Hungarian Navy. 
And I want to send my destroyer out to place... Hmm... I want to place a mine. Now, the ports can see one one sea tile around them. So placing a naval mine here is useless because the AI will know. I'll have to place it here, probably. So let's place a naval mine and get as far away as possible. Okay, then we'll bring the rest of our ships over here. Because they're pretty much in a terrible situ- like in a terrible state. Um, okay, and you can move over one as well. Perfect. Yeah, that's pretty much all I get to do for now. And now we are going to end the turn and we'll see what the AI does. Right? Is there anything I forgot? We did this. Did we entrench? Uh, we couldn't here. We entrenched basically wherever we could. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we're fine. Let's uh, end the turn. Luxembourg has surrendered. Good. And uh, we actually plunder two military power points, which is very good for Germany. Uh, we didn't start off with any, so I couldn't use a lot of the... Um, yeah, a lot of the features because we didn't have any points. Okay. Um, our Middlemere or Mediterranean division, whose flagship is the Goeben battlecruiser is currently in the Mediterranean in the Mediterranean sailing towards Constantinople. It is recommended that the Gubin continue on to Constantinople, where it will be taken into service into service with the Ottoman navy and renamed the Yavuz Sultan Selim. If you decide not to send the Gubin on to Constantinople, then she will instead sail to Pola in the Adriatic, where she will serve alongside the Austro-Hungarian navy. Would you like the Gubin to sail to Constantinople or would you like them to serve with the Austrians? Now, um we can, I, I like, I really like about this decision that we can actually, um, you know, delay, like view, view the map first before we have to make a decision. Plus, there's also some historical notes here where it says saying yes to this will not only provide the Ottoman Navy with an urgently needed reinforcement, but it will also help mobilize opinion in the Ottoman Empire towards joining the war on our side. And basically, this is what we need. We want the Ottomans to join our side as quickly as possible. And so I'm going to say yes to this. And that should increase that percentage here. France increases arms production in the southwest. Okay, so more power points for them. And a decision for Austria-Hungary. General von Böhm, or General von Böhm er Molly, and the 4th and 7th Corps of our 2nd Army are currently en route to Novi Sad and Tamishburg near the Serbian border, where they will deploy shortly to take part in the, invasion, in the invasion of Serbia. However, deploying them there may leave us with insufficient forces facing the Russians. Therefore, it has been suggested that we send them to the Russian border instead. Unfortunately, sending them to fight against the Russians will delay their arrival by several weeks. Okay, so we can have them fighting Serbia right now or fight Russia some months later. I will check the notes for this. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia before their army had finished mobilizing. And Russia's support of their Serbian ally led to the mobilization plan being changed. This caused extensive delays and confusion, with many of the soldiers sent to fight the Russians having to march long distances after disembarking, disembarking from their trains. Additionally, sending these units of their second army to serve against Russia left Austria-Hungary's offensive against Serbia lacking in sufficient strength. Now, this is actually where I'm going to deviate from the historical path because I think taking out Serbia, especially after I've been very conservative in this first turn, uh, is, is crucial. So we're actually going to say yes to help um, fight against Serbia. So we're going to get, uh, yeah, we're going to deploy the second army and we ha have a headquarter here and two new corps that are... Uh, very much needed, obviously. The French mobilization continues. The Russian mobilization continues. So you'll see they get a lot more cores. Um, and luckily, the Austro-Hungarian mobilization as well. So we get another headquarter here. One more core. That's it. The French get some cores. And UK starts sending supplies for Russia. So this is the convoys I talked about in the first episode. And here we finally have our first collection of military power points. And you'll see that we get plus 10 from our convoy with Denmark, plus 30 from Sweden, and 18 from 
Norway. We can send some to Austria-Hungary, which we're not doing currently. We're also currently paying for mobilization, but that's going to go away. This is just here in the beginning. And we're getting a whopping 65 via the neutral Netherlands. So they are key. They are key to us. And then, uh, yeah, I was actually too slow. We saw the income for Austria-Hungary, which is much lower. And we saw them uh, the income for the Ottomans as well, which is incredibly low because they're not yet at 100% um, war readiness. So um, that will increase. Now, you saw right here that this Serbian detachment was actually um, reinforced by the Serbians. Okay, there's... Oh, they actually moved away. Interesting. They now have a core in, uh, in control. Interesting. Of this town. Then I think the French have uh, entrenched. You will now see... Now, I could technically turn off um, the animations for the uh, Entente turn, but... Um, and that will make the game a lot faster, but I actually like to see what's happening, because otherwise there's potential for missing things. Now, this is a crazy attack. We lost three. That's because we're not entrenched. We actually might lose this core. Uh, this was much better for us. Um, but I think this core might still be destroyed. Okay, we're being attacked here. This was actually relatively good for us. Um, oh, this was very bad. Four? Damn. Yeah, so I think this cavalry core is dead. Although, well, who knows. But as I said, it buys us some time. Well, I think it's dead. Yep, okay. We lost a cavalry core. But here's the thing. We're going to lose... A lot of cores like this is not this is not the last that we'll lose but look at this we actually protected very well over here um this was okay um but yeah obviously our objective is this this was a distraction i knew that i knew that we're still very open this flank is entirely open we need to do something about that okay yep there are the russians they have a ton of troops they are scouting with their cavalry, because the cavalry can actually look a little bit further than uh, the regular cores, and it's obviously a lot faster as well. You see the Belgians have actually reinforced as well. Okay, we have a river defense here, so this is good for us. Um, this cavalry couldn't really do much here. Uh, by the way, this is actually one of the uh, mobilized units, I just realized that. I didn't put that unit there. Okay, they're entrenching. That's okay. We're, we're going to focus on Belgrade anyway, so we should be fine. Uh, the UK seizes the Ottoman dreadnought Sultan Osman I, and the Ottomans are outraged, which I believe makes them want to join our side more quickly. Okay, our mobilization continues. We have another core, another headquarter. And the fear of German raiders upsets trade from the British Empire which I believe just reduces their national morale. And that was the enemy turn. Obviously, in the beginning, not too much is happening. Um, uh, but yeah, we already lost a core. And as I said, uh, a lot more will be lost. Now, um, again, the uh, yeah, the Ottomans here, they have, uh, they have now increased their war readiness. Aiding Austria-Hungary, without assistance, our Austro-Hungarian ally could struggle to achieve decisive victories against Serbia and Russia. In due course, it may also have to face war with Italy. It is therefore recommended that we send aid to Austria-Hungary. To do this, we can click on the war maps. Um, yeah, uh, yeah this, this is something that I already mentioned. We have these convoys, and the convoy from Berlin to Vienna is actually very safe. It can't be raided because it's on land. And obviously, we control all the territories around it. So it's generally a good thing to do, but I'm not sure if I want to do that right at the start. But yeah, given our weakness in East Prussia, we could greatly strengthen our position there by bringing Paul von Hindenburg out of retirement and giving him a field command. To assist him in his duties, Erich Ludendorff can serve as his chief of staff. Providing Hindenburg and Ludendorff with the necessary logistical support will cost us 200 power points at 50 points uh, a turn for four turns. 
Um, now, we'll check the notes here as well. Pell von Hindenburg had retired from the army in 1911 after 45 years of service. Being called out of retirement at the start of the war, he defeated uh, Samsonov's second army at Tannenberg and then von Rennenkamp's first army at the Masurian Lakes. His successes in the east led to him replacing von Falkenhayn as chief of the general staff the following year, with Ludendorff taking on the role of first quartermaster general of the general staff. Together, they directed German military strategy, uh, strategy until the end of the war, and Paul von Hindenburg was actually later uh, the uh, Reich's president, or the, the president of the uh, German Empire. Um, or actually, even the Weimar Republic, uh, which is kind of interesting as well. Okay, um, yeah, obviously we're going to say yes to this. Um, there's there's no reason not to do this because specifically the uh, headquarters are very expensive and this is actually much cheaper. So yeah, we're going to say yes to that. Von Hindenburg comes out of retirement to command and we need one here desperately, as you can see. Now, um, that was our unit for now and um, I do want to quickly show you something. We're going to check out research in the next episode, but I want to show you our units and what we can purchase. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show that to you next time as well, but I just want to show you that a headquarter here for Germany would cost... Um, where does it show the cost? Uh, 390. So we just got one for 20, uh, for, for, for 200, um, and this costs like almost double that. So th this was a good deal. Uh, this was a good deal. Anyway, for now, that was it. That was the first turn. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed or enjoyed the series so far. Uh, I definitely do. And I will see you next time.